So this is Lindy Combi. She's our pianist for today. And here's Mark. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Happy Father's Day to everyone. turned it and then started playing and it was like turned right at my music stand so for a whole song it was just playing right at my music stand that's all you can see get your vaccines, both of them? Those are from the Department of Health. Sorry, but that's not my future. Man, it's not me. I read, I, I, read, I read too much. I just, I do hope that people don't have a problem. Well, that's what Bruce is worried about. Like people starting to treat people like you can't do things unless you have your cards. Like, like really, like authoritarian about it. And Bruce, when he got it, it was like no big deal. But oh man, I couldn't even get out of bed for like 24 hours. 
Yeah. Oh, really? After you shot? Mm -hmm. Well, I got it on a Friday, and then Saturday I mm -hmm. couldn't. And I didn't know if I would make it to church, and I came, and I mean, I felt so bad. And then I was like dizzy, and I felt so strange. And then that afternoon, I started feeling better. But like Saturday, I couldn't even get out of bed. You had both? Yeah, it was the second one. Was that one. the first or second one? The second one that did that to me. The first one, I just kind of felt a little strange for a second, and then it was like fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the second one was pretty rough. Here, there by thy mercy come. 
and I hope by my good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of life missed you me from danger in their precious blood Oh to grace how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be let thy grace Lord like a better find my wandering heart to thee prone to trust as you worship with us, you'll be drawn closer to Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, closer to us as a community of faith, a, fam a church family as well. Well, it is Father's Day, and coffee and bagels today are going to be in the fellowship hall, put on by Welcome and Reach, I believe, and uh, so you're all invited there after the service. We have a guest pianist today, Linda Comby. We're so glad she's with us, and uh, thank you for coming. She'll do great. Now, everybody who's a father, to stand, please. Every dad, let's go. Up we go. Give it up for him. Everybody who's had a father, stand as well. All right. And turn and say, and it is great. Sorry, guys, I had to do it. <laughs> it is great. We're so glad. Restrictions have been lifted, and we're seeing people again, and we just thank God that we can worship like this, and it is a glorious, glorious day. Well, let's stand for our call to worship, if you would. Uh, thank you. Tell everybody what it is. The number? No, I'm not telling you. No. Okay, you don't have to. Okay. I'll just give everybody a big hand. <laughs> You're fine. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it. And uh, as my grandma Olson was 39 for 57 years, I think I'm going to go Herbert. Just, uh, just say I'm 39. Thank you. Your pleasure and joy to serve. We love it here. We love being, I, I love being your pastor. My wife loves being. Uh, and the band and everything she does, so and our kids love it as well. We look forward to Sunday mornings all the time. So thank you so much. Let's start with our call to worship. <clears throat> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have truth is not in us, but if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a brief moment and ask the Holy Spirit to show us where we fall short of God's standard of holiness, confess those sins, and receive the forgiveness that we have in the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat 
so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, he got up and said to the waves, Quit. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said, Do you still have no faith? What is this? Even the wind. Crabs give to charity because they're shellfish. <laughs> Why did the man name his dogs Rolex and Timex? Because they were watchdogs. Uh, what did the evil chicken lay? Deviled eggs. What's the best <laughs> tournament, Larry? Live stream. <laughs> My wife asked me to sync her phone, so I she's mad at me, but anyhow. <laughs> and how do you tell? You'll see one later and one in a while. All right, that's enough <laughs> of the dad jokes. So when I say these names, Harvey. Tina, Andrew, Agnes. Very good. Um, where was it? Wysong Medical Center in McKinney, Texas. Clay lived in Beaumont, Texas. What a great guy. You know, in this day and age, um, Clay was African American. Never thought of that ever once. Because when you're in the midst of somebody going over the edge and they want to kill you, it doesn't matter what color anybody is. You're there for each other. Clay had a kiddo some of you know about that he had a heart transplant. It was a heart transplant, wasn't it, honey? And um, uh, Clay and Bree, uh, they, they're just wonderful people. He's now a nurse, and hopefully, I hope Clay becomes a doctor, to be honest with you. But there was so much devastation. He lived in Beaumont. He moved out of Beaumont, Texas, right on the coast there. So much devastation, he moved to North Texas to get out of those hurricanes. And, uh, you know, they're devastating those things. Puerto Rico is still recovering from Hurricane Maria that devastated the island in 2017. So they cause a tremendous amount of devastation. Chaos ensues whenever a hurricane or a storm arrives. It's interesting how we attempt to control chaos, though, isn't it? It has been suggested that we even name storms to reduce the chaos they bring. In case two arrive at the same time, it's good to have names. Uh, the closest I've come to experience chaos of a hurricane uh, was not in South Florida, where I went to school for two years, uh, where the locals pronounced hurricane, hurricane, the Spanish word uh, for hurricane. No, it was in North Texas, where during the summer there were daily tornado watches. And are we ever glad to be away from that? When conditions are right, watch. When one is on the ground, you get a warning. I'll never forget when Minuet and I heard the warning signs and that mechanical voice saying to take shelter because one was on the ground. And as we looked in our hall closet, saw how close that was to the sky, we didn't feel very safe at that moment. Remember, so, remember almost all the homes in North Texas do not have basements as we do here. Uh, fortunately, the sirens stopped, the warning ended, we were unscathed. But chaotic situations usually are not our favorite time unless we work in ER. Those people are a different breed, right? They just love chaos, and uh, I have great respect for them. But we really don't like it. We try to correct 
start cleaning or organizing things when we feel we're in a chaotic situation. Anybody do that besides me? Get your hangers going all the right way? Things like that? Yeah. But feeling out of control isn't a wonderful feeling. I don't think uh, there's even an emoji for feeling out of control, although I'm not up on emojis these days. Uh, but in our gospel passage this morning, the disciples experienced chaos, and they didn't like it either. I doubt they put names on hurricanes, storms that rolled in on the Sea of Galilee like this one in our passage. We read in verse 35 that, Jesus, that later that evening, Jesus suggested going over to the other side of the lake, and they offered no resistance. They followed him, got in the boat, and went. But Mark tells us a furious squall broke out the boat. Now, the disciples weren't pagans, so they didn't believe that they had offended some pagan deity and there was payback for their uh, behavior. They were God-fearing Jews who knew when a squall blew up that they were still subject to the forces of chaos, evil, and death. For the Jews, the sea represented chaos. We see that in Genesis 1-2, and two, one, two, that the earth was formless and void. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The sea has always represented The creation story is how God brings order out of chaos. He separates things there in Genesis 1 and 2. Uh, land. And an overarching theme in Scripture is how God deals with evil, both natural and moral. Here in Mark 4, chaos reigns once again. A squall's come up. The waves overwhelm the boat so that it almost went under. But where's Jesus in the stern, sleeping on a cushion? What? The disciples couldn't wait. They woke him and asked, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Now, isn't this the question that most people ask who leave the faith? Don't you care about me, Lord? I'm in the storm and you're asleep? You don't care? You are worthless and powerless. I'm out. Have you and I ever said that? Don't look so pious this morning. You know you have. There's been times when you've just said, uh-uh, I'm out. I'm not doing this. I can't follow you. And you know what? God's okay with that. He's okay with doubt. The disciples knew Jesus was in the boat with them, but they didn't have any faith in him. Who knows where their faith was? Is it the same with us? As believers in Christ, that he will be with, with us even to the end of the age. He gave that with the Great Commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them, teaching them. He said, I'll be with you to the end of the age. But uh, we focus on the storm, don't we? The waves. The sounds of chaos all around us. Finally, they looked to Jesus but question his care for them. He didn't take offense, but after he rebuked the wind and told the waves to be still, he rebuked them by asking, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Here in Mark 4, Jesus answered their plea for help. Jesus su seemed almost surprised that they had no faith in him. I think when we're new believers or babes in Christ, Jesus th does things for us to increase our faith. As our faith matures, he doesn't necessarily deliver us or rescue us from every storm we face. In my faith walk, he stretched my faith in who he is by not doing everything for me that I would like. Why does God not deliver us from every problem? Because faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not seen. He wants our faith to increase because without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Lord wants us to have faith, not fear. He wants us to try show up. Because as Romans 8 tells us, God works everything together for good to those that love him, to those that are called according to his purpose. And you and I are as believers in Christ. Jesus never, ever promised to rescue us from every storm. He promised to be in the boat with us in the storm. As Mark Norse says, we're either going into a storm or coming out of one. 
And that's the truth. And Jesus is right there with us, going in or coming out. But if he doesn't end the storm that you're in, like he did for the disciples, it has nothing to do with you per se. It's not because you have a lack of faith. Remember, Jesus said the disciples had no faith. So Jesus simply cared about them and ended the storm for them. No, faith says, as Shadrach, Meshach, and, a, and Abednego said to King Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 3, when he told them that they would go into the fiery furnace if they didn't bow down and worship the golden image he had constructed, King Nebuchadnezzar, they said, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Get this, though. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or what you have set up. That's faith. Even if he doesn't come through, we're not worshiping false gods. We're not turning away from the one true living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you read Hebrews chapter 11, to the end of the chapter, unfortunately our victorious life people out there, they only have you read half the chapter where mouths of lions were shut and governments were set up and people were delivered from all kinds of things. They don't have you read to the end of the chapter. It's the Hall of Faith chapter, if you read it. You find out that though there were many heroes of the faith who were delivered, there were just as many who were not. They were sawn in two, the scripture says, and things like that. Yet they never gave up their faith because they were looking for a city whose architect and builder was God. If we want to increase our faith, then let's first focus on Christ, not on our circumstances. Because as someone has said, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Monty Williams is the head coach of the Phoenix Suns, and they are still in the playoffs. Yeah, let's not go there. The NBA coach's choice for coach of the year. The coaches chose him as coach of the year here this year, 2021. He gave a faith-filled speech at his wife's funeral. Then he was an assistant coach for the Oklahoma City Thunder. His wife was killed when another lady crossed the median and hit her head on. God, my wife is in heaven. God loves us. God is love. And when we want to celebrate, because my wife, I'm envious of that, but I've got five crumb scratch snatchers I've got to deal with. I love you guys for taking time out of your day to celebrate my wife. We didn't lose her. When you lose something, you can't find it. I know exactly where my wife is. I'll miss holding her hand. I'll miss talking with her. Going through the storm of his wife's tragic death was one of the worst storms anyone could go through. I can't imagine it. You might be going through a storm right now. Seems that before we know it, we're in the midst of storms. Many devastating storms can hit us out of nowhere. No matter where we live or how much money we have, we can encounter all kinds of storms. We encounter the storms of cancer, divorce, unemployment, financial difficulties, illness, or more interpersonally, betrayal by a friend, unwarranted criticism, Gossip, prejudice, rejection, abandonment. This father was losing our dads. It was on November 28, 2018, that my dad went to be with the Lord. I had texted him a picture of the snow-capped mountains, the Wasatch Front, a couple of days earlier. He texted me back and said how beautiful Utah was, and 20 minutes later, his heart quit on him. He fell and hit his head. The dogs tried to lower his core body temperature, but when they warmed him back up, his heart sputtered and stopped. I'm so glad Minuet, Lexi, Gracie, and Mackie got to spend some time with him 
at Nags Head out there on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And I still thank this congregation for allowing me to take off 10 days right after I started. I miss him. Fortunately, he gave me his golf clubs. And every time I play, I thank God for my dad. His name is still on the clubs, a little identification band around each club. He was an incredible worker, provider, fair. He taught me to look people in the eye and shake hands with a firm grasp. He gave 100% all the time. And he taught me how important faith in Christ was. I thank God for him this Father's Day. I hope and pray that I have the same positive influence on my kiddos as he did on me. Coach Williams' statement about his wife helps me. I haven't lost my dad. I know where he is, and I know where mom is too. But I do miss playing golf with him and calling him on Sunday afternoons to talk about one day I'll see him, not because he was a good father or a good man, but because of his faith in Christ for his salvation. I thought about it yesterday as I wrote this sermon. Dad and I had many, many, many talks about Christ and how he died on the cross to pay for our sins so that now we are justified by faith in him alone. That salvation is by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Our salvation is all of Christ and none of us. Even our faith in Christ is a gift from God. None of us is worthy of heaven. We're only worthy because of Him and what He did for us on the cross, paying for our sins to satisfy God's wrath against our sins. But let's admit this morning our faith isn't always strong. In fact, often we are of little faith, focusing on the waves more than Christ. Faith focuses on Christ, not on our circumstances. And if we want to increase our faith, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So if your faith is weak and it needs to be strengthened, let's get into God's word. A story from the days of sailing ships tell about a ship caught in a sudden and severe storm. The passengers became panicky, rushing here and there as the waves beat upon the ship. There was fear and dread on the faces of all the passengers except one little boy who remained calm and cheerful. When asked why he was so calm, he said, Why should I be afraid? My father is at the helm. In other words, he was not afraid because his father was in control. May we ask the Lord to increase our faith this day. May we ask him to teach us how to sleep in the storm. May we pray the words of this song, Sleep in the Storm, by a group known as Unspoken. How can I trust if I run from all the trials? I'll never rest if I don't chase your heart. Sometimes the path that may take me through the fire, but if it's your desire, lead me straight into the storm. Let the thunder be my comfort. Let the lightning be my guide. Let the waves that rise around me hold me gently through the night. For the winds that seem against me push me right into your arms. Teach me how to sleep in the storm. And all God's people said, prominent American lawyer, a Presbyterian elder, and in this. But uh, he was married to Anna Larson from Norway, and he was a prominent lawyer, and uh, they hung out with Dwight Moody, the prominent evangelist. He was popular in Chicago, uh, and he was, but he was no stranger to tragedy. He invested in real estate, however, it was taken away from them during the Great Fire in Chicago in 1871. <coughs> Larson lost his four-year-old son, the Scarlet Fever. In a desire for his family to rest, he sent them over to uh, Wales uh, on a ship, but he couldn't go because he had some business to do. And so he stayed behind while they went. And unfortunately, that ship uh, ran into the sea vessel Black Burning. 
It was reported that Anna, the mom, took her daughters to the deck where they knelt and prayed to God for their life being spared. The ship sank in 12 minutes. 26 passengers, including their children. Unfortunately, only Anna survived among his family. The rescue brought Anna to Cardiff, Wales, after nine days. She sent a telegram to her husband saying, Saved alone, what shall I do? And after Horatio sailed out to join his grieving wife, as he passed near where his daughters died, he penned, It is well with my soul. like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows throw whatever my Lord now has taught me to say it is well it is
ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right to side that we should at all times and in all places. Offer thanks and praise to his holy name with the saints on earth. And the hosts in heaven join in our name. <laughs>
Blood of Christ shed for the remission of our sins.
gifts, cards, whatever. Again, what a pleasure it is to serve you. Never hesitate to call the office, call me at home, call me on myself. Never a burden to talk to you. Always a blessing to be involved in your lives. It is a privilege. I count it just a tremendous joy to be your pastor. Have a blessed Father's Day, and I am going to have a blessed birthday as well. In fact, we are having a birthday weekend at the Grenzes. Uh, and it started Friday night, so if I look more like the Pillsbury Doughboy than I did last week, <laughs> go in peace and serve the Lord. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. <coughs> We pour our heart of prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims, our one, our comforts, and our cares. We share each other's woes, our mutual. Thank you for coming. Thank you. It was very nice of you to do that. Yeah. You're welcome here anytime. You're always welcome here. Everybody gave you an earthquake.